a pressing challenge in uh, mental health research and in the treatment of mental illness is to prevent that illness from ever occurring, to keep people from becoming ill. Because we know in psychiatry, as we do really in every branch of medicine, that treatments are limited in their effectiveness. And once a person is ill, it's very difficult to cure them of the illness. So in this work, we are looking for ways to predict who is at increased risk for developing mental illness, uh, mental health problems like depression and anxiety. The long-term implications of this is that if we can understand who's at greatest risk, we might be able to first predict who's going to develop depression and anxiety after they've experienced stress. And then also, if we can understand why they're at greatest risk, this could help us intervene um, to prevent the development of these disorders before they become chronic and more difficult to treat. So undergraduates who met our inclusion criteria for the study were invited to come in and participate. And they came into the lab on the first day. And they filled out a number of uh, questionnaires and assessments looking at their personality, uh, symptoms of anxiety and depression at that time, uh, stress they had experienced, and a number of other kind of facets of their personality. And then they underwent fMRI scanning or functional MRI scanning, uh, which is a brain scan that we can do to look at how the brain is activating in response to whatever we show people in the scanner. So in this case, uh, undergrads came into the fMRI scanner, um, they were lying in the scanner quietly, and we showed them pictures of emotional faces. And what we found, in fact, is that higher levels of amygdala response, uh, as, as assessed through this fMRI scan, do, do in fact predict higher levels of depression and anxiety in these students up to four years after the scan was, was collected, only if they've also encountered stressors. In other words, how strongly this brain uh, response is uh, and that the, the functioning of this brain region that coordinates our response to danger actually tells us about who is at increased risk for developing depression and anxiety as a function of experiencing you know, modern day dangers, modern day stressors. So what these findings can tell us are that uh, for undergrads, for example, in our study, the participants were undergrads. If you have higher amygdala responses during fMRI scanning, even as much as one to two years later, we know that if you go on to experience a stressful life event like uh, death of a parent or flunking out of school or getting in a car accident or a combination of those, those individuals who are showing higher amygdala responses are most likely to show an increase in anxiety and depression symptoms. And so what this can tell us is that maybe those individuals should uh, um, get help earlier or that resources for treatment should maybe be going towards those individuals instead. And so it allows them to potentially seek access or gain access to treatment more quickly than they would without this marker. In the overall scheme of, of searching for ways of preventing and uh, uh, better predicting mental uh, illness, our work informs um, these efforts by identifying a specific type of brain response, the amygdala's response to threat, that could be used in future work to actually uh, predict and through that prediction prevent the emergence of mental illness including for example post-traumatic stress disorder. There have been smaller studies done in at-risk populations, soldiers for example before they're deployed to combat that have already hinted at the importance of this brain region's uh, functioning in, in the subsequent development of post-traumatic stress disorder. Our work suggests that differences in this brain region's functioning can in fact inform a much larger uh, issue of who's at increased risk for depression and anxiety in the general population.